Well, welcome, Jason. Welcome to Leading is Serving. Hey, Chris. Thanks, man. It's good to see you today. It's good to see you, too. Yeah. Oh, I know that we are um, getting ready to talk about some exciting yearly rhythms. That's right. Because we have now hit weekly, monthly. Daily, I mean, weekly, monthly. Daily, weekly, monthly. No, quarterly. Okay. Quarterly. quarterly. Sorry. I was like, I knew that didn't sound <laughs> We right. don't even know what we're doing. No, that, yeah. that one definitely didn't sound right. So yeah. now that we're on... Daily, weekly, quarterly rhythms. Now we're on and Now we're yearly. on annual. Yeah, what do we do annual? And so, okay. But, man, we're glad that you joined the podcast today. And, yeah, thanks um, for... You know, jump over to leadingisserving.com because um, later on uh, we're going to kind of do a deep dive on frustrations in business mm-hmm. um, based on a listener question, Woo-hoo. you know. Yeah. Um, but we reference a couple other uh, podcasts in that. So yep. um, be sure you jump over uh, to the website, leadingisserving.com. You can search. You can put a keyword in the search bar and find anything, any episode. I mean, out of 60-something episodes, right? I do right? love that. That is so yeah. much easier. Yeah. And so if you had a friend that was on the podcast once upon a time, or you just want to know when marketing shows up in a podcast, mm-hmm. you know, and so um, not that it searches our audio, but um, any of our descriptions, yeah, descriptions and titles yeah. and stuff like that, um, which we try and do an okay job at. Time. Yeah. So jump totally. over there. Um, you can leave us a comment, rate, review, um, leave us a voicemail, Send donate. Us a message. If you love this podcast, stay in on, I mean, we're, uh, we're totally listener supported, self-supported. Yeah. We don't uh, bring revenues in from anywhere, but but you and so, but if, we are um, looking for some reviews so we know that we're actually like, yeah yeah like so that I mean share we know that, that people are yeah. enjoying this reviews are huge in helping grow a podcast but um, if you hear something in an episode share it with a friend yeah that's really the best way so appreciate your support yes so, thank you but uh, yeah you ready to talk about these rhythms yeah because this one I think we've hit it at some level uh, on different different episodes, but let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's the, talk, let's break that down a little bit. I think the big one that everybody thinks about is goal setting. Yes. That's right. what I was thinking. Right. And I know we spent some time, I think in October yeah. on one of the episodes, October, November. Um, you know, talking about goals, we mm-hmm. have probably hit it two or three times. I think we fall, did. Cause if I remember correctly. last year, I think we were trying to hit it. Um, there was a couple different things that popped up that we wanted to discuss about it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. October 5th. Hey, looky there. We there just did uh, some quick research. And I know that, you know, I know personally that's about the time that I start thinking about it was October because I try to get a, you know, a head start because sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to process what I want my goals to be yeah. versus just writing them out. Like right. I got to take that, like we talked about at one point where it's like, Hey, let's, this is one of those moments where we definitely need to step out of our current situation for the day or for the mm-hmm. week or the month and think about the bigger picture at the 30,000 foot view. Right. Like you said, right. um, it's just one of those things that it's a big picture issue. It's it a is. big picture it time. Is. And I want to, I want to take some pressure off, um, because you know, we, October, late September, October is when a lot of business people start thinking about the new year, mm-hmm. you know, and those are the forward thinking planning kind of people. And that may not be your, your forte. Right. <laughs> It's okay if this is not you. You may be hitting, uh, what does this come out in? You know, late January going, <laughs> I should have this set the goals this year. Uh, I'm happy to, you know, make it to the gym. Uh, <laughs> right. you know? um, that's okay. That's okay. I actually talked to a, um, a leader out West who, uh, birthday is in March. Mm. And she thinks of her annual year at her birthday. Oh. And so when she you know, has a birthday in March, yeah. that starts her new year. And so she sets goals March through February or April through March, you know. Oh, that's and, a great idea. Yeah. And so it it fits her I guess nobody rhythms said. and her thought process better, you know, and she's yeah. just like, you know, because we, I was on a group call and she's like, God, I don't have, I don't have goals yet. I'm in the last two months of finishing mine. I'm like, what? What? Who does that? Right? <laughs> right. You know, and so That's interesting. You know, but I'm also in an organization that uh, our fiscal year is August through July. So why would we set? Why wouldn't we set our annual goals going Based into that. that year? You know, yeah. so you know, don't don't feel pressure that you know. In the whole, every podcast, everybody's talking about goals from mm-hmm. October to January, like we have. Right. Sorry, we added to that pressure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to recognize that you know. 
if your business is a little bit different or your timing yeah. is a little bit off, it's okay. Right, right. Right. I'm pretty sure high school teachers don't set annual goals in January. I, I, that's probably a safe assumption. You know, and so if your business works in a different manner, feel uh, lean into your own rhythm. That's what we said last week with quarterly rhythms, right? Right. right. You know, find where your quarters end and where your seasons end, and lean into that. Mm-hmm. You know, just the the important thing is having the rhythm, right? Not that having the rhythm of everybody. We're not else. giving you an excuse to not do this. Like you still right. got to do this, right? right. Like right. So this is not an out. It's right. still got to be done, or else you're you're not going to be moving the pendulum. Right. So if since October you've been going, I gotta set a goal, I gotta set a goal, I gotta set a goal. Hey, your new year can start in March. It's fine. Right. <laughs> but it needs to be done yeah. soon. Don't push it off. Yeah. Yeah. Annual goal might just be to set an annual goal. Right. So that's fine. <laughs> I before when I before I started my businesses, I probably would have used that as like, eh, I got plenty of time. <laughs> right, right, right. But I think I mean, yes, goal setting, I mean, it's huge. It's big, right? It totally is. But what goal setting does, at least in my mind, because this is partly where I like to live, uh-huh. <laughs> is I like to get up to that 30, 50,000 foot view, right? I like dreaming about the future. I like dreaming about, um, you know, is there a better way to do today? Mm-hmm. You know, and so right. um, this process, is, process forces you to get out of the daily grind. Right. And get up to an objective level where you can see all parts working together mm-hmm. and not being sucked into the mire of one. Right. right. And um, I think that should be part of our annual rhythms, whether yeah. you're whether it's your goal setting or not, maybe even twice a year. Mm, I, I would agree. I would agree. Even if it's just for, hey, after lunch on such and such Friday, I am out mm-hmm. and I I'm off. The re- I'm, I'm off the reserve. I'm done, right? right? No cell, no email. I'm just out. Right. And you just get away, find somewhere that you can just truly think about the business. Right. Not in it. Right. <laughs> you know, just... Yeah, and at some level, you need to sep- your, separate yourself from the headaches of the daily business, of the daily headaches. You know, sometimes, yeah. like, uh, I know for me, I really enjoy getting away for a couple of days because then I can separate because it's sometimes it takes me a minute to separate my head from the problems so that I can think yes. about that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes everybody, I've had multiple people tell me, well, just get away for an afternoon. Well, for unfortunately, for whatever reason, I can't do that. Hmm. My head, yeah. I cannot stop thinking like even over this last weekend, I, yeah. I was thinking about projects over the weekend that I needed to work on stuff. True. And so I was writing estimates over the weekend that I had mm-hmm. some get some stuff done. My wife was like, well, why don't you just sit down and write them all out and be done? And I was like... Because then there's six it, other things behind that that right. I'll start thinking about. Yeah. Like, And so I know that for me personally, I know that sometimes I need to take like two or three days, either go to a conference, which mm-hmm. oftentimes I appreciate because yeah. it helps me look at some of the bigger things. Or just separate myself for a couple of days just so that I can help wrap my head around that 30,000 foot view. Right. Because right. It, it, as, an, as an entrepreneur who is very involved with the day in, the day out, mm-hmm. it's sometimes very hard to disconnect. Yeah, that's a good point. I took a, I took a sabbatical in my uh, worship role. Mm-hmm. Um, and it took, I, I was out for three months, mm-hmm. which is just ridiculous, right? right. Um, there, in a in a huge sense, it was not long enough, mm-hmm. and in other senses, I was ready to get back. But it probably took a month to fully unplug. Yeah, and, I remember talking. And to even you then, I had a I had a hiccup along the way <laughs> that yeah. kind of uh, threw me back into work mode because um, I went on a vacation early in that time, right. and I came back from vacation going expecting to be fully unplugged. Mm-hmm. But I came back from vacation, and my brain and body was like, "All right, time to get back into work." That was a great vacation. Like, right. no, I've got more time. Yeah. So I had to start the unplug process over again. You yeah. Know? Um, but, I mean, that's a good point that um, go do something that just breaks the flow. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, I, I love to play golf. So, you know, take a two- or three-day weekend retreat. Mm-hmm. And when you show up, go play golf. Right. Go get a big, you know, nice dinner. Mm-hmm. And, you know, go to a movie that evening. Yeah. And then when you wake up the next morning, you're, yeah. you know, do what you need to do to unplug. Right. You know, and, you know, provide that space. Because honestly, I mean, if you go back to the five voices, mm-hmm. you know, um, 73% of our population are present voice. 
nurtures and guardians. Okay. okay. And so staying in the moment is their natural bend. Mm-hmm. Bent. They're bent naturally, whatever that means, right? Right. Um, that's the natural. And so that means 73% of people struggle to pull out of the daily grind and right. get up into this, this you know, 30,000 foot level. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> those are my last two voices, <laughs> nurture and guardian. So I don't struggle with that. So <laughs> I struggle staying in the moment. Uh, <laughs> it's opposite for me. But, um, you know, if you're part of that group, you know, you're not alone in that, mm-hmm. you know, if, if trying to unplug and trying to see that high view is, yeah. it's difficult. It's hard. Well, and I think that, you know, like, I don't know about other people, but I'm also in the midst of growing my family. My, I've got two kids at home yeah. and my wife is busy with her career. And so it's like, I know that there's sometimes like, it's going to sound bad, but there, I know I just need to separate myself from all my responsibility for a minute to be able to even yeah. get myself to even get close to thinking about that 30, right. 35,000. Well, and then there's, you know, on top of family, there's the serial preneurs too, right? Right. <laughs> Who have three or four or five gigs going on, right. you know, whether you own them or not. Right. You know, I I know um, uh, one of my good friends. He's one of his work. He only gets five days off a year. Really? And so his other jobs provide plenty of flex- flexibility. Mm-hmm. But one job ties his feet to the ground. <laughs> wow. And so getting away and getting that unplugged time is very difficult for him. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, that's that we recognize that's a hard struggle for some people. And right. So, um, and I mean, many, many businesses, if you if you're at the you're at this position where you're trying to make a decision on whether and um, when you can spend time with this, like, yeah, at some level, each business has a some sort of a rhythm and a flow. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's a time and a place that you're probably less likely to interrupt everything major, you know, during the year. Mm-hmm that you can get away or, you know, separate yourself so that you, you can balance that a little right. easier so that it's not a huge hiccup in the yeah. process. And even think creatively of like, you know, you could take three days, take the family with you mm-hmm. and, you know, and let them know. I mean, set up the expectation on the front end, like, right. Hey, this is, this is work oriented, right? but we're going to go together. We're mm-hmm. going to have a great family time on Thursday night. Yep. We're going to get away. Great family time Thursday night, Friday. I'm sending y'all to the water park. Right. And you're going to spend all day at the water park. I'm going to spend all day working. Right. And yeah, that kind of, you, initially you're like, oh, that kind of stinks. But right. you weren't planning on going before. Right. <laughs> You've just given the kids a great day, right? Right. You know, the family a great day. And then on day three, you go with them. Mm-hmm. Like, go find all the best rides. Go, you know, or we'll go to Six Flags next. Or, you know, right. well, two days of fun, and I'm going to miss one of them. Yep. But, you know, you're going to be with you know, the other parent and, you know, bring some friends along, you know, whatever, right. you know, make a, make an event of it mm, and I love you know, that idea. really That's guard, a good one. you know, but guard it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and be intentional about it. You know, those are, those, those can be great memories and great moments, even in the midst of trying to figure out your business. That's good. Thanks, man. I really did. I really hadn't thought about it that way. That's a really good. Hmm. Should we go plan something? That's kind of what I'm thinking. So <laughs> hit pause on the podcast. We'll come back. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so all that to say, guys, um, be intentional because the yearly rhythms can sneak up. Yep. Um, the year That's can fly sure. by. Um, my wife and I just this morning were talking about something in March, and I was like, that sounds forever away, but mm-hmm. I know February starts next week. Yes. It's going to be here before we know it. And I'm like, I'm Dog looking forward gone. to February. Yeah. Well, just because you got some time away. Coming yes. Up, I I've think. got time yeah. away going away. Yeah. So, um, one you know, of my yearly rhythms is, is coming up yes. in February. Yeah. So I that, think, I mean, not that I guess that I didn't thought about it. We're that getting way. a little long on our time, yeah, but, sorry. um, vacation is another yearly rhythm. It totally is. Or maybe monthly or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on what you're, which, how much you can get away. That's right. There's a conference in Hawaii. I will be back. <laughs> yeah. Um, if only that were true. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, those yearly rhythms of rest and renewal, mm-hmm. um, planning and, you know, getting up to that 30,000 foot view, your health is probably more important than your goal setting. I agree. In my opinion. I agree. I think, I think as um, entrepreneurs, that's oftentimes something that we neglect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. And we, you know, if you've got people under you, you probably, you probably preach it all day from the rooftops right. of health, 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 and then we're the worst at it. Right. So true. Well, what are we're, we going to talk about the next podcast? Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a healthy rhythms. All right. 
<laughs> but no, I mean, we did cover that in some of the daily and the weekly and, you we know, did. of, you know, of how do you stay healthy? Well, and I you... think if you kind of keep these in line, they'll help you keep better with your healthier yeah. balance of life. Right. Right. So true. Right. So we are going to move over, I think. Yeah. Right. Sounds we'll good. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with a uh, listener question about yeah. frustration in business. Uh, I'm excited about this one. I'm sure they're the only person ever experiencing that, right? right? So, so we're just talking to that one person. <laughs> yeah. Y'all can all tune out now because we know you have no frustrations. Right. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back, Jason. Hey, thanks, Chris. Thanks for uh, joining us if you're listening in. Yeah. We are going to go down a different road today because um, we're going to take a break Another um, from doing a interview with somebody. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I'm stumbling with words today. Thanks, hey, me too. Um, and But I want to... Uh, a question came in right. um, from, you, from our YouTube channel mm-hmm. from somebody that's asking a question. I think it's very important to have a, this conversation. So... Right. Let's talk about it. What was exactly yeah. the question? Do you so know? the question was around frustration with the business. Right. Right. And finding <clears throat> out how do I know what's missing? Hmm. And I think that, you know, these these are great conversations to be having. Like yeah. if you're not in the midst of this, that's great. But right. also recognize like everybody goes through this, right? Right. So we're all at some point going through this process and there's different frustrations that pop up at different times, which I, I don't know about you, but I think it's easy. <clears throat> you think it's easy? Yeah. You start a business? a business, you build it, you... No, not at all. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, so from now on, I'm going to talk to you more. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. No, but, I mean, yeah, we all run through this frustration. Right. I mean, it is not easy. It's not hard. You sleepless nights. And right. And I think that if you listen to podcasts, like like we often do, like we listen to several different podcasts of, of, of different business formats. And even though we have the information at our fingertips mm-hmm. sometimes, like even then we still have these frustrations. So like, well, yeah, it's definitely a real thing. So if you're in the midst of going through this, you know what? Kudos to you. Right. Because you are stretching yourself you are embarking into areas that are probably driving you nuts, but you know they need to change. And you are not alone. And you're not alone. Not at That's all. That's exactly right. Ever. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So I mean, because one of the things, I mean, the easy answer is to say, get some outside advice. Right. I mean, our last episode was about networking and mastermind groups and, right. you know, finding entrepreneurial circles that you can bounce things off of because there is, I mean... When you're so deep in your situation, I mean, it's it's like it's your, you're at the bottom of a pit of despair, right? Right, right. <laughs> and the only way to get out is really to view it from a higher angle, from totally. an objective way. And because everything is so subjective in that pit, mm-hmm. it's hard for us to see. Right. And so talking to others really helps. That's a huge part. Right. They and help. I, yeah. I was going to say, you know, this is a great time to recognize, hey, you know what? It's not a horrible idea that, right. to go down the road of maybe inviting a coach in. Exactly. Okay. For, exactly. For starters, right? right? That's a great way to have somebody kind of over you, mentoring you through your process. Right. But if you don't, aren't capable of that and you're listening to a podcast, I mean, because I did it for a long time. Like, there for a long time, I couldn't, I couldn't afford a coach. And so the, I was trying to use podcasts and things like that for my business mentoring process. Right. Right. So before I was able, now I have coaches, mm-hmm. I have multiple coaches. <clears throat> which I'm blessed with. I'm very thankful with. Um, but what I've recognized now is, is that, um, I, I can't afford it for my business. And I, ha- I almost, ha- I, don't, I don't know that it's even, I can't afford it anymore. It's more like I got to afford it, if that makes sense. Right. But then let's, let's go back to the position of where I was before. If I was in a position where I couldn't afford to have a coach overseeing some of these things, then, you know, the, the, we talked about the, um, the groups last week. That's an mm-hmm. awesome, awesome opportunity to right. to invest in other people. But then talk to the people that are around you and mm-hmm. and see see what they're saying about right. maybe something right. that's wrong. So I mean that's the easy thing is right. you know we could easily say oh just go talk to somebody right. But we got some other advice. We do. I mean <laughs> let's talk about like where those frustrations are at. Yeah. Because there is so many things that are involved in business that. Just because you're frustrated with it doesn't mean that it's right. You got to throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? right? Right. 
So let's right. let's discuss that. Yeah. So uh, we'll give a shout out to Donald Miller. Um, he is the uh, guy who wrote uh, Business Made Simple. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got quite a few uh, books, and I mean, it, we enjoy their con- his content. ton of stuff. Yeah, uh, the story branding and around marketing, and uh, it's brilliant stuff. So, it is. Um, but in the Business Made Simple book, um, he, they talk about seven areas of your business, mm-hmm. and they call it like an airplane, right? Right. Um, you know, nice little analogy that's helped me remember the seven areas. <laughs> right. The first one is the cockpit is your leadership. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the body of the plane is your overhead. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how much it costs to run the business. Um, your wings, one is your services and one is your products. Mm-hmm. Right? right. You've got two engines, sales and marketing. Yep. And then you've got your fuel tanks, which is your cash flow. Mm-hmm. And so he goes through those seven areas and helps you break it down <clears throat> and understand maybe where things are missing, where you're frustrated, where you're feeling, you know. And so, uh, so let's just start with leadership. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll start up in the cockpit. Uh, what are some of the frustrations that come along with leadership? What are some of the pits, the pits that we can fall into, literally, right. with our leadership? You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I can list them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, for, it's, sometimes it's people. It's sometimes the people that are in that cockpit. Absolutely, you got Some, wrong, <clears throat> wrong, the wrong seat on the wrong bus. Right, right. Yep. Maybe the bus isn't the one for them, or right. maybe they're in the wrong seat. Yes, they're driving when they should be doing something else. Right. right. And sometimes it's the process. It's mm-hmm. the process they're going through that's trying to make your business better. Sometimes that process mm-hmm. isn't tweaked enough for them to know truly what's expected of them. Right. And so then it's not a person in the seat that's the wrong thing. It might be just getting them through that process to make sure they understand what seat they're sitting in. Right. right. It's not necessarily a personnel issue. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's skills and ability mm-hmm. that they just they, they're in the wrong place. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's capacity. Maybe something is overwhelming them in another area that they just can't do what they need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes um, oh, there was one other. What was it, Chris? What was it? You're supposed to be reading my brain. Uh, yeah, uh, not today. <laughs> <laughs> not today. Um, uh, shared values that sometimes they don't understand the true right. expectations. That mm-hmm. maybe you're you're the business owner, but the person you've got in leadership, right. they they're they're going a different direction, and you keep getting frustrated, right? Right. Core, and are you if, talking about core values, right? Is yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, like you know, uh, you know, whether that's you know the direction of the machine that you're trying to drive, mm-hmm. or um, you know, just what you want to see happen through your leadership, right? You know, you just. <coughs> You know, and so that's where things like, um, you know, we talk about the five voices a lot. Right. That talks about, um, you know, who a person is, how they communicate, what they're, you know, helps them be in tune with their own tendencies. I agree. Um, and then it also talks about communication of mm-hmm. getting that alignment, getting on the same page and getting in the same place so that you can execute with better efficiency and effectiveness. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, you know, there's a lot of different things that can go haywire with right. your leadership. Right. Um, and if you're a solopreneur, it's you. Right. <laughs> Take a good look in the mirror. You're all seven parts of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, then you're getting into burnout, you're getting into exhaustion, you're getting into, right. you have to be all seats on the bus. Right. And there are some seats you don't want to be in. No. Because they're not, it's not what you're wired for. And I have been told by other people have you? that I suck at certain things. And, Early on, I actually did struggle with it because I actually thought I was halfway decent at it. And, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, but I've come to terms right. with it. Well, I, I remember, you know, back when, working furiously to make my weaknesses my strengths. Yes. And then I back off of my strengths, and then I'm kind of worthless all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our weaknesses are never going to be our strengths. True. So lean into your strengths and find people to... To help you. To fill in your weaknesses. With your weaknesses. Because it's their strength. And recognize when you say, and I I think we should, I'm just going to throw this out there. But I think that (laughs) um, when you say your your weaknesses, like if I have to find somebody, if I'm a solopreneur and I need help from somebody to do, take care of my weaknesses, that doesn't require somebody at 40 hours a week. No. no. You know, you might need help from somebody who's a stay-at-home parent. That can work mm-hmm. some during the week and is willing to give you devote so many right. hours a week to help you out with that process, right? Because they want to find some work and you need some help. Totally. Like, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you need a full time employee or try to figure out how to justify a full time employee, right? You know what I mean? So I think there's some creative ways to help deal with mm-hmm. our weaknesses 
that people just kind of automatically figure that you have to go from zero to a hundred in one jump. It's just, it's not necessary. I mean, right. I have a neighbor, God bless her, who said, Chris, why don't I help you with this? And I was like, are you serious? And they, <laughs> and that person was like, yeah, I want to help you with this. And believe it or not, that person has blessed me like cr- greatly because of her, the things that she's been able to do for me right? Um, through this process yeah. and, and helping me grow. Right. <clears throat> and as leaders, it's really hard to understand that other people love and are passionate about the things that drain you. Yes. Because I have always felt so <laughs> stinking guilty giving things away going, I feel like I'm hurting this person. Right. I don't know but, that I can do that. Right. But there are people who love making sales calls. Really? <laughs> That's what I hear. Um, there's people who love being on social media and doing marketing and really creative design. There's people who love crunching numbers on spreadsheets. Oh, my goodness. And, I mean, these people are out there, and they enjoy these things. They love coming along and supporting people. And so it doesn't matter which... If you fit any of those voids, please send us a message. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and so it doesn't... You know, whichever end of the spectrum you're on, there's mm-hmm. people on the other end. Totally. And, that's, and going back to Five Voices, that's the beauty of understanding the the value that other people bring to the leadership table. I completely agree. And you know, and whether it's support or leadership, the value that other people bring to you is right. is huge. Well and I think, I mean, to your point, right? I think this is why many people aren't always meant to be solopreneurs or entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And then there's some people that, you know, we're meant to have a job. So it's it's okay. Like we all need each other, right? At right. some level. Right. So it doesn't necessarily mean that just because if you're not an entrepreneur, but you're supporting an entrepreneur, you might be the next step from that entrepreneur. Like it's, right. you're a key person for a key role. Yeah. Oftentimes that doesn't necessarily mean that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, okay. We, we've spent a lot of time we, on yeah, leadership. Sorry about that. We're supposed to hit high level. That's my favorite out of the seven. So <laughs> we hit it right out that's the gate. Kind of, yeah. All right. Let's talk about, but I mean, that's where you need to start. Right. You know? Oh yeah. Um, well, I mean, those key people are as starts. Mm-hmm. The other thing I think, um, probably a blind spot for a lot of people is the overhead, Mm -hmm. that the body of the airplane is your overhead, right? Um, I mean, if you think about even like some of the new apps that are coming out, Mm -hmm. I see these, you know, offered on, uh, you hear them on podcast ads, you see them on TV between the football game, you know, whatever, of like, hey, install our financial app, and it will track all of your subscriptions, all your Netflix, your Prime, your... (laughs) Your, you know, Disney Plus, your, you know, whatever subscriptions, you know, ButcherBox and Bespoke, whatever, right? Yeah. It'll track all those subscriptions that are coming through your checking account. Yeah. And will help you find subscriptions that you didn't know you had. What? Really? I know. That's kind of what I thought because I'm like, I know exactly which subscriptions I have and how much a month they are. Right. But these apps are taken off because I think that is a blind spot in our culture. So why would it not be a blind spot in our businesses is where I'm going. Yeah. Right? Right. So not just subscriptions, but, you know, we do something and we get comfortable with it. We get used to that process. Mm -hmm. And four or five, ten years down the road, there have probably potentially been innovations in that area that you could save 50 percent. Uh-huh. Or seventy five percent, right? Right. Right. I mean, just think about your TV at home, right? Mm-hmm. You know how how much did the first, you know, big screen plaza plasmas cost? Yeah. Thousands, Thousands of, dollars. of dollars. Yep. You know, and then this last Black Friday, you could get a sixty five inches for under four hundred bucks, uh, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, so true. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. And so if we start to look at our processes, we start to <clears throat> look at the things that um, that we're paying for. Um, there might be some huge savings there. I agree. That affect your cash flow in the end, right? Yep. That's because so true. overhead is what counts against your gross profit. Right. And so if you're paying out some stuff, you know, you're paying, you know, you might be able to, you know, if you're in a, uh, say, a restaurant industry, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, how many times do you see packaging change? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. You remember right. when the Whopper used to be wrapped in the cardboard box and now it's in a paper? Yep. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if they are. I don't know if that's true, but, yeah, but you know, it's, I rem- it's I mean, gone back and forth. Yeah. yeah. It, that it's not just design. I mean, there's a lot of eco friendliness in that, right? Right. But it's also cost. Yes. You totally know, is. 100%. And so, um, you know, we choose, you know, there, we have a lot more control over our overhead than we think. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and totally tightening down the screws on some things could create some fat, some cash flow, and reduce the frustration in that overhead department. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Finding a new provider, finding a new, mm -hmm. you know, something, something. Yeah, because all mean, the that definitely affects everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, just, you know, and loyalty plays a part in that sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, that we're, so true. you know, we know the, the rep at that one company, but right. I could really save 20% if I go elsewhere, you know, right. that's hard. That's yes, hard to balance, totally but you know, I can definitely see how, um, you know, the overhead can, can create a negative frustration, something that really just creates angst mm -hmm. of like, I can't believe I'm paying this bill again. I've right. always got bills, you know, right. um, maybe, um, maybe okay. So, because leadership is my favorite. Right. We tie it back in going, maybe you just need to get somebody who pays your bills for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that you don't see that stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, and they're the well, ones tracking it going, hey, I, I think say, there's a way to <clears throat> save here. Or, and you know. I, I, to that point, right, oftentimes if you figure out some of this, these details, sometimes that, that cost savings can also help support you paying somebody to take care of these problems or right. overseeing that process. Right. Right. Which is well, and quickly... You know, I worked for I worked for a um, top of the line computer company mm -hmm. once upon a time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I might have had a fruit in the title, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, I remember having conversations of people just going, "Give me the best. Mm -hmm. why, why do you need the best? Right. Well, I want to surf the web and do my email. You you, you don't need, need to spend twenty five hundred dollars on a laptop. Right. You, you can spend fifteen and have way more. You. You can spend a thousand and probably be fine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you and, need a dub down iPad. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so how many times do we overbuy even in some things like that? Of, so true. Of just not knowing, right? You know that we're not we're not taking the time to evaluate what we truly need and what that would truly cost. And right, you know, there's so true. There's people that help with that. There's resources. Yep. And so yeah. So what? Which one are we touching on next? Where do you want to? You know what? Let's do the wings. Okay. Let's do your the wings. products. And on one side and your services on the other. I mean, um, you know, and when I think about the products, I think about the um, the the parts that you love. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh man, I just love this product, mm -hmm. but it's actually maybe one of your lowest selling products. Yeah, <laughs> and you're you know, part of your brain is just kind of going, why don't people love this more? You yeah. know, that it may not be the <clears throat> one that hits the biggest. And mm -hmm. so have you ever done an audit on your products and your services of here's what it costs for me to produce that mm -hmm. or, you know, provide this service. Here's the overhead, uh, you know, associated with that. And here's what I can charge and the profit margin. Right. That, um, you know, sometimes lower sales of a higher profit margin are right. more beneficial than higher sales of a lower profit margin. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, and so, you know, have you done a, um, Oh, what's the cost analysis? Go for, go down that road. I don't okay. know if that's what I'm looking for. Um, it's just basically a breakdown of your expenses and your your um, oh, your labor and materials. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I I was going more um, market comparison. Oh, okay. You know, have you have you reached out to other people who do the same thing that you do, and what are they charging? Yeah. You know, your labor rate may be. What's your competitors charging? Yeah, you mm -hmm. may you may be way under. The market. This is true. And you could raise your rates and still be on the low end, right? You know, st still maybe even the bottom end, but you know, um, you can raise your rates and still improve still. your profit margin. You know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Which is the I think you got to be cognizant of those things too. And as a solopreneur, like once again, you're doing all of this. Yeah. Like you, I know, and you know, as a solopreneur, you're not. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. But these are things that are key factors that are also going to help you understand some of your frustrations. Right. So if you're frustrated with one of these areas, take these ideas and maybe play with them a little bit. Because mm -hmm. that's what I do love about this setup is that hopefully you can use this as, hey, these are this is where some of my frustrations are. Right. You know, right. this is where I think it I can narrow it down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. So you know, doing an audit of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, the services you provide, the the products that you offer. And maybe there is a new way of offering um, like a more entry level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if you're, if you're, you know, if your only product is, you know, $2,500, mm -hmm. 
and it, maybe that's a recurring cost, like for a service, it, you know, it's some type of, you know, big, t- big ticket item. Mm-hmm. Is there something you can get more in the, you know, is there an entry level product you can develop? You yeah. know, so, um, you know, there's some, there's some, there's some different ways to, to think through how you do your products and services, how you set yourself up for success, maximize your, your profit. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then there's, you know, the whole sales and marketing engines, right? right. That's you know. kind of, they go hand in hand. Right. right. And, you know, is your is your sales pipeline clear? Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a web-based business, do people know where to click? Right. Do they know how to buy, you know, does your credit card processing actually work? Right. <laughs> I tried That's... to order something on an app the other day. It was a restaurant. Yeah. I was trying to beat the line, mm-hmm. you know, so I <clears throat> ordered before I left the house, show up, and it didn't go through because... Oh. The, the the credit card, it, it says it accepts like five different payment methods. Right. But it really only accepts two. Oh, are you serious? But they work in the store. All five work in the store. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so I still had to stand in line, you know, and so... For your bill? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, they didn't get the order because the payment never the went, payment through. went through. Yeah. Oh, and my so goodness. I didn't get to skip the line, but, you know, it was like three people. So I'm That's out. not so bad. I'm so spoiled. <laughs> um, First world problems. But the point is, you know, is that pipeline clear? You know, Mm -hmm. if you're, you know, like you guys, if you're offering, you know, quotes on, um, you know, how to rebuild a deck behind somebody's house, Mm -hmm. how do they get that quote? How do they follow up? How do they, you know, get it on the schedule? What does that pipeline look like to convert from a lead to a sale? Right. Right. And then you back up even farther to the marketing of how do I even get those leads? Right. And, you know, and, and didn't we do a deep dive on some marketing stuff last fall? You know, we you might know. have. I might, might have to go back and check on yeah, that. Yeah, we might. We'll, we'll, we'll do some quick on-the-spot research. But what I was going to say is that doesn't every marketing company out there, when they call you and like, hey, Chris, we want you to market on our products, right? Right. Um, we will get you X, Y, and Z. Right. Everybody's going to say that. Right. That's so true. <laughs> don't, don't get suckered in. Yeah. Right. So November 16th. Now, if you go back to episode 52, we did a navigating marketing options. Uh, mm-hmm. Not that we're brilliant or anything. Or gurus but, no, we are, are brilliant. but <laughs> We're not marketing gurus. Yeah. Um, but that's another opportunity for you to look back and uh, go a little bit <clears throat> deeper on the marketing. Because um, mm-hmm. there's a million options, you know, mm-hmm. just showing up on social media. You know, some people are like, that will bring you billions, right? Right. Um, but, you know, probably the best piece of advice is, are you sticking with it right. long enough? Mm-hmm. You know, are Which, you showing up consistently? Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of people that with different type, types of marketing. Well, you have to do it for this many months for really to see a return. Right. right. Really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I started a Facebook page. Right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. How long ago? Well, I've, I've had a Facebook page for six months. Right. Okay. How many posts have you put up? I think three. <laughs> right. Okay. How many followers? My mom, Follow, you know? yeah, yeah. My you mom know. joined last yeah. week. I mean, we love our moms, but you know, that's, we, we, we that forgot doesn't... to tell her the first couple of months. <laughs> yeah, so you know, um, you have to show up consistently, <clears throat> and mm-hmm. you know, uh, make sure that you're marketing in your target audience. Right. You know, you can market in the wrong places and never get a dime back because mm-hmm. you're sitting in the wrong place, well, talking to think, the wrong people. I mean, I've, I, I want to talk about that marketing just for a split second, because um, I think that what we've what I have found is like, who do your who do you serve? You know, we're all trying to reach customers, right? But there's other professionals that oftentimes need your services for their customers. So, like mm-hmm. for instance, okay, um, I know that realtors oftentimes need general contractors to come and look at things, different points when they're right. trying to go through right. this process of selling or buying or selling a house. So usually, hey, we need an idea of what this is cost. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes that that's a great avenue for me as a general contractor to be connected with realtors because I know they need my services at some point. Right, right. You know, and I want to be their go-to person. So I'm not always reaching out to just customers. I'm also reaching out to other professionals that Who I has know. has a pipeline into that, yeah. Yeah, that I know they're going to need my services. And I want their transaction to go smooth. So I want to be able to provide a service for them and their customer that they're going to be happy mm-hmm. with. Because then now I've created a, a great opportunity to help the realtor as well as help the customer. So whether they're buying or selling the house doesn't really matter because – What I've found is, is there's times where I go into a house and the selling, um, the homeowner, the seller, is happy with our services. 
So they go buy right. a new house and they call us to do an estimate on something else. And then the new homeowner recognizes we did the work and they right. call us back to do something else. Right. So it's just, now there's three people I just marketed to and I didn't even do any marketing, period. All right. I did was reach out to some realtors and help right. them out with a, their process. Right. Which works great, like we talked you know, last week about uh, through networking groups, right. right? Yeah, I mean, you can get networked. You can, you know, greet people, and you know, um, but even more beneficial is building a relationship around that integrity, around that trust of correct. You know, if you're if you're truly doing a good job in what you do, mm-hmm. um, people will recognize that, and you'll sure. go to the top of the list. I agree. You know, so I agree. Yeah. So we got one last area. One right? last man, capital and cash flow. Yes, I got to be honest with you. I. This, this area has kind of been very, I can't believe we're touching on this today because it's been, it's been an interesting, yeah. it's, in, it's an interesting road for each business, mm-hmm. I will say. Right. Like the whole capital cash flow thing. And I'm, I've talked to multiple businesses about, you know, being in debt versus not being in debt and yeah. cash flow and accounting because apparently accounting and cash flow are two different things. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's been a frustration of mine. See, this is why you find other people right. to sit in that seat of the because, bus. Because, <laughs> and that was the thing. At one point, I thought I was pretty decent in accounting in high school. Right. Yeah. Now, my accountant says, as well as my office manager, who are now teamed up against me and tell me, Chris, you're not allowed to touch this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? So now, yeah. um, and, but you know, they do a phenomenal job. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. And I'm very thankful for them. I'm just, Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's some parts of the airplane we probably should not touch. You know, <laughs> Apparently, but, I am not. But all of, you know. That one. Solopreneurs, I, I, I'm one, so I feel your pain. Yeah. Of, um, I don't know how to get some things done. And yeah. Yeah. It's and tough. The crazy part is, is when I was a solopreneur, I thought I was doing a halfway decent right, job. Right, Apparently, there's a p- breaking point where you go, Okay, you just you just keep your hands off the yeah. books. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the marketing people get say, you know, stop using Comic Sans for yeah. your, your titles. Now, don't give me ba- <laughs> don't get me wrong. There's checks and balances in that mix. Yeah. Like you, you have to yeah. go in and check in on things. But cash flow is definitely one of those things that it's a living, breathing thing. You have to have money right. in order to be able to do the right. marketing is to make the sales. And, I mean, pack. I was talking to a friend yesterday, and it's like, how's it going? He's like, that's been a day. One of, you know, just one of those days. It's like, really? And what happened? You know, and well, I was driving down such and such road over here, and the pothole was as wide as the lane <laughs> and about a foot deep. Oh, and wow. I blew a tire again. Now, mind you, last year at this time, mm-hmm. he replaced two front tires. Oh. And within two days, blew one of those brand new tires on another pothole. Oh, my goodness. I mean, horrible luck. Right. I mean, and I've ridden with him. He, good, he's a decent driver. Decent driver. This, you know, I'm not blaming him okay. whatsoever, but a just year for the later, record, it was not me. Yeah, yeah, it's not Chris. <laughs> uh, but a year later, blowing another tire on a pothole. Oh my goodness! And um, and his wife's car hit the same one. Oh, and so they're both taking their cars. And, yeah, I mean, it's it, apparently oh, it was frustrating. A, it was a pit. It's the pit of despair. You know, <laughs> um, but I mean, that's how I think a lot of business owners feel with cash flow. Yes, like I completely. On agree. Friday, you're ending the week going, "Hey, my new tires are th- these. Are, this is a smooth ride." And then Monday morning, bam, <laughs> <laughs> you're in the tire shop. <laughs> right, you've lost half, lost half the day. Yeah, or you know, or you're running on empty just for so long, going, "I need these few invoices. I need these things to come through." And you right. know, it's the money's out there. It's just not in here. You right. know, right. and you know, and so managing that aspect is emotional. It it is. Should we say that? I mean, I mean, I think it we started can. with frustration today. So yeah. Well, the the those the and at the right for the the business owner is somewhat emotional because mm-hmm. are you failing as a business owner or is it just the process is failing? Like, how do you balance those two out? And it's right. it's not. There's some frustration that goes with those. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. So. All that to say, Mm -hmm. if you are finding yourself routinely frustrated, like week after week, you're like, oh my goodness, when will this roller coaster end? Right. Right. Um, If if you can, Mm -hmm. in that moment, if you can identify what the, you know, what is the most frequent frustration? Yeah. You know, just like, I've got to sell more product. 
Mm-hmm. I've got to sell more. I mean, the products are great, so you know that wing is right. Right. But that engine, that sales, why am I not selling? I We've got to sell more product, you know. Right. Um, if you know that's your frustration, you know where to d- deep dive. Right. 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 And um, but if you're sitting there just going, I don't it's it's a swirl. It's mm-hmm. a tornado of frustration. And I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't have anybody you can reach out to, like we said earlier. Right. Right. Um, I would suggest like a frustration tracker. Yeah. Like I'll just write it out. Yeah. Like put these seven things, leadership, your overhead, your products, your services, your sales, your marketing and your cash flow. Put those seven things down and then just put a little chicken scratch, a little check mark. On, you know, for a couple of weeks, just track your frustrations. And be like, what am I frustrated about today? Yeah, my marketing. I'm I'm wanting to jump ship and do so. Okay, check. Yeah, move on to the next day. Track it for a couple of weeks and see what comes out. Yeah, and I definitely want to touch on. Like, I don't think we dove too deep into capital and cash flow, but if you have problems with finances, more than likely it's got to do something with your billing. So hmm. if you're not billing fast enough after the job is done, right. there's a huge lag then yeah, naturally you're going to have an issue with the cash flow. Yeah. I had this problem at one point. Like I was right, like, right. oh, why don't we have any money coming in? Like we got these jobs done. Oh, oh the bills never didn't, the, like we, we got completed. Yeah. And some, and I think it was me, I mean, I'll, I'll blame me. Like I think at some level I forgot to hit go on the invoice. Right. And so like right. we went through a cash flow shortage and I was like, what's going on? Like, how, we, mm-hmm. you know, and so our billing was off. Right, right. And so like, these are all accounting finances, cash flow issues. Right. And so mark those down. And think through like the dominoes, the domino effect, right? Right. Because um, I'm thinking, you know, when you're telling that story, I'm thinking about an entrepreneur that we know that we were both talking with who is frustrated and like feeling like the leadership, you know, solopreneur, Yeah. leadership is out of whack. I don't know if I should be doing this. Okay, well, what's frustrating? Well, it went to cash flow. You know, I'm just not making what, okay, well, is your overhead? No, your overhead's not necessarily out of whack. Right. Oh, it's your billing. And he, yeah. he was sitting on two or three weeks worth of invoices he hadn't sent out. Yeah. <laughs> just take an hour. Right. Go <laughs> just, send that out. Yeah. You because just got to push pause on everything. I mean, because I also have to recognize as an entrepreneur, I think that we think that this happens, but it doesn't. We send those bills out. They're not going to pay them today. <gasps> Right, like <laughs> it's usually like two weeks or three right. weeks or thirty days, depending on yeah. where where what kind of business you have. Like, Depend- yeah, and some day some some jobs it is it's that day, but yeah, but I mean that's <clears throat> maybe part of nice being in like a retail space where the, you get the money the moment you collect the it when you're done, right? Yeah. But maybe that's not you. You may have built that product right months before. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> you bought the inventory for that yeah. months before, you know, and right. so that's just sitting in your overhead. It's just sitting there waiting for somebody to make that transaction. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we move it? How do we make it happen? And um, so I love the fact that we've dove into a little bit of all these because, mm-hmm. you know, I think frustrations, bringing it back to our original conversation, which is like, you know, if we're frustrated with our business, like, what do we do? Like, right. And I think that it recognize that it's okay. It's, yeah. it's okay to be frustrated with, and it's actually a blessing, in my opinion, because if you're frustrated with something, that means you there's something wrong that you know needs to change. There's something that has to change in order for it to be better. Mm-hmm. And so in your frustration, you are getting an insight that something should needs to change to get better. Right. So recognize it for what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you had a business owner, or, you know, come up and be like, hey, how's the business going? You're like, Perfect. Runs like a top. Right. Would you believe them? Um, I'd be scared. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe... Either you're not involved in the day-to-day and they're lying to you or... <laughs> or they're clueless. <laughs> or you don't want to admit anything, you know. Yeah. Right. Um, because business is messy. It is. Bottom, right, bottom line. So, um, But I want to give another last shout out to uh, the Business Made Simple um, with, uh, you know, Donald Miller. Um, mm-hmm. They've got a great podcast right. where, I mean... Honestly, I read the book, and yeah, I've listened to a lot good. of their podcast. So and I. you know, we're hardly experts on this, but it's given sure. us a framework to think through. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if you want to know the experts, go over to Business Made Simple. And so, we'll probably yeah. put a. We should just link that in the show notes. Sure. Why not? Sounds good. You know, um, sounds good. Because you know, we're all one happy community and family. Right. Let's just yeah share the love. So great, great book. Yeah. Good stuff. Hey, great. um, 
Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. And thanks to uh, Ms. Martinez for sending us the question. Yes. We appreciate that greatly. And, Feel free to uh, send some more in because yeah. we, we enjoy talking about this stuff. And hey, you know, we're not perfect, but we we have learned a thing or two in, in, some, in mm-hmm. so many of the ventures that we've been in and worked on. Um, as well as helping other people. With We've crashed different... a few airplanes. Right. <laughs> right. We've had engines fall off. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we won't admit that to anybody else, but you guys. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, jump so. over to leadingisserving.com. Mm-hmm. Leave us a comment, review, question, voicemail. Um, if you love the work that's going on, we'd love for you to you know support us financially even. Yeah. Um, we're by donation only. And so love for you to jump over and take a look at that. Let us know you're listening. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. See ya.